Welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. In this video, we are going to talk about caching in WordPress. So you might already be aware about what caching is. So we're not going to get into the detail of what it is, but we'll discuss what are different types of caching and we are going to understand how caching works in WordPress and how to implement caching in WordPress. So there are different types of caching. First is your browser cache. So a browser cache happens on the client's end and it works exactly as a site caching, but it is a cache system built into the web browser. The browser temporarily saves the copies of website files, including HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and images. And typically a web browser will keep its cache for a limited time or until it is full. And after that, it will automatically flush out the old content and save the updated one in its place. So let me give you an example of a browser cache. Let's say you visit a website, which is youtube.com. When the user visits from one page to another, there will be certain elements in the page, such as your icon, your site icon, uh, maybe any other icons in the footer or on the left hand side or certain images they are going to be repeated on every page. And if they are going to be repeated, it does not make sense to request those from the server over and over again, right? Because your internet is not as fast as your computer is. So if you're saving that information into your disk as a cache, then it's going to be faster compared to on the internet. So if you do an inspect element, you'll see that if you go to the network tab, just refresh this, and let's take a look at the image. So if you take a look at this, this image tab, and then we look at what all it's caching. Okay. So you can see this is the image. And if you look at the headers, you scroll down, you'll see you have something called cache control here, right? And this cache control has a max age of 86400. Now this is in seconds. Okay. So for that many seconds is going to cache that. And if you request the same page again, and if that same image is supposed to be loaded, it's going to pick that up from the cache, from the browser cache, instead of making a request to the network. And that's pretty powerful because then uh, the next time you're going to load your page is going to be faster. Okay. So, so you can see there are different images that have been cached. If you also look at the application under cache storage, you can see that the basic icon, if you look at the image, you see there's a YouTube icon here that's been cached. All right. So that's how the browser caching is pretty powerful. You know, sometimes when a client faces some issues, the first thing we tell them, well, please clear your browser cache. <laughs> so the next one we have is the site cache, which is also called page caching. The site cache or the page cache temporarily stores the website data, such as images, web pages, files, and similar multimedia. The first time a web page is loaded. And then the next time, if that same page is hit, and if there's a page cache, and it's going to serve the content and the data from the cache itself. So serve the entire page from the cache. The next common type of caching is the server cache. So server caching is also similar to site caching, but instead of saving the content on the client's end, like for example, in browser cache and page cache, you were doing it on the client's end. In the server cache, we do that on the site server. Now, there are two common types of server caching. First one is object caching, which we will be studying later in depth in the upcoming videos. And the second one is the CDN cache. So what is object cache? Well, object caching stores database queries in a server side cache so that the next time a visitor requests content, the server can deliver it immediately without having to query the database repeatedly. And this is pretty powerful because your queries are really expensive, right? If you are writing a complex query in WordPress, like a meta query or a taxonomy query, you're making a complex query. Now, if, if you are going to hit the database with the same query over and over again, then definitely it is pretty expensive. So rather than doing that, we can cache the response of our common queries, and then we can store that as a form of an object cache. And the next time the user visits that, we can actually retrieve that from the cache rather than hitting the database. And this is pretty useful. We'll talk about that in depth in the upcoming videos. 
Now, let's talk about CDN caching, which is also called offloading. So let's understand what CDN is. So CDN is content delivery network. So rather than storing your static assets such as images on your own server, we can keep it on a content delivery network so that if the user visits your website and, and there's a request made for that particular image, it can be fulfilled from the content delivery network rather than your own server. So first of all, it reduces the load on your server. And second, usually these content delivery networks have the different server hubs into the area where the user is. So if the user is in a certain area, certain location, the closest CDN in that location can serve that image so it will be faster and plus it's not adding any load to your own server because those static assets such as images are being served from the content delivery network and we call this offloading also because we are removing that load from our server and moving that to the content delivery network okay so the cdn will serve the cache files from the server closest to them to reduce the loading times Okay, so if you take a look at how caching works in a nutshell, let's say there are users who visit your website on the browser. First time the user visits your site is going to store some of the static assets in your browser cache, which are going to be repeated page by page. And of course, it will have a certain expiry time after which the cache is going to be automatically burst and the user will be served fresh content. Similarly, uh, on the client side, we also have the page cache. Uh, so the first time user visits the page, the page will be cached and put it in the page cache so that next time we deliver the content from the page cache and some of the static assets, we can put it onto the CDN rather than on our own server. Okay, then you have your entire application. And let's say that uh, when the data is requested, the data which is put on a server uh, and then the data is requested. So the first time the request is made to the database and we cache that in the object cache so that the next time the user visits and requests for that content, we can serve that information from the cache. Okay. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And in the next video, we're going to start talking about the object caching in WordPress. All right, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.